it's the middle of the night and you need to pee. You drag yourself to the bathroom, expecting a flood, but instead you get a trickle. The problem? Your oversized prostate is causing your bladder a whole lot of stress. Bad prostate. Hmm, not so fast. The prostate is the problem, but is it really to blame for benign prostate hyperplasia? What if your prostate was a victim of a drama that is playing out several floors below, in the blood vessels just above your testes? Well, according to a team of radiologists, it often is. Our team looked at the nether regions of 901 men, ranging in age from 33 to 81 years, all with symptoms of misbehaving prostates. In each case, there was a problem in the blood vessels of the testes. Now, it was not necessarily obvious. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we probe why prostates expand at a time in life when circulating levels of testosterone are tanking. Because understanding the why offers new solutions to this common problem. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the blood vessel issue was spotted when the team performed a varicose screen, which is a special kind of scan which looks at the temperature inside of the testes. Now, it's often done in cases of male infertility because hot is a problem. You see, temperature is a big deal in spermatogenesis. If it's hot, sperm production screeches to a halt. The boys require cool. So for this very reason, the testes hang outside of the body. This prime location allows them to enjoy breezes, hopefully. So their temperature is a cool 33 to 34 degrees C. The rest of the body is a whole lot warmer, clocking in at around 37 degrees Celsius. But this prime real estate with breezes and views has one problem, gravity. The blood gushing down to supply the sperm nurseries must return to the heart for redistribution against gravity. Fighting gravity is always a challenge, but in the human male, this is an especially big ask. The human testes is a skyscraper, not a parking lot. Dogs, horses, rats, etc. all have parking lots. With four legs on the ground, the testes is short and squat. But when you're a bipedal, the hang changes, necessitating some fancy biology. Now, to move columns of blood directly up from the ground floor all the way to the penthouse, the kidney, a distance of 35 to 45 centimeters against gravity requires some innovative plumbing. No worries. A series of strategically placed valves buffer the inevitable backflow, allowing the stream to rise against gravity. The way a valve works, there is the push, which coincides with the squeeze of the heart. This propels the blood forward and upward. Then, as the heart takes a moment to recoup, the little valves slam shut, stopping the blood from slipping all the way back down. It works like a charm, until the valves fail. And they do. One by one, they pop off. The lowest ones are the first to go. The damage is progressive, and as a result of the fall, the pressure in the entire internal spermatic vein system skyrockets. Now, exactly why they go is not clear at this stage. The trigger is probably a trauma to the testicles, but if you're insulin resistant, the odds of a failure increases, probably because at the heart of it, insulin resistance is a delivery problem. The point is, with all that pressure in the system, 
something has to give. The blood diverts to the prostate. It's arriving via the back door, bringing with it the full testosterone load. You see, besides making sperm, the other big job of the testes is to supply the body with testosterone. So the blood exiting the testes is full of testosterone. We're talking about levels a hundred times higher than in the general circulation. It's meant to be diluted. The blood coming out the internal spermatic vein system should mix with the rest of the blood, dropping testosterone to normal, healthy physiological levels. And it is this blood that should reach the prostate gland, helping the prostate do its job, which is to provide this special fluid to support the sperm on their dangerous adventure to find and win the heart of a beautiful egg princess. The extra testosterone causes havoc. Since testosterone regulates prostatic cell activity, the excessive amounts cause prostate cells to up their game. More cells are formed and the prostate gland gets bigger and bigger and bigger, resulting in benign prostate hypertrophy. Or in some cases, this can progress to prostate cancer. Now, the current fix for the problem is to either snip out the prostate, ouch, or to turn off testosterone production using drugs. Now, the way these drugs work is they inhibit the enzyme 5 alpha reductase, which makes testosterone more biologically active, converting it to dihydrotestosterone. The problem is, alpha reductase is a peripheral enzyme. So this means that the testosterone is not turned off in the prostate. Instead, it's turned off everywhere else. It works. Testosterone levels drop low. <laughs> Lower than low. Too low. Aging is already associated with lower testosterone. And low T is synonymous with bad body chemistry. So lowering testosterone to keep your prostate in check seems hmm, somewhat counterproductive. Time for a plan B. This is what our team was interested in. There are both surgical and non-surgical options to fix varicoceles. In this study, when the non-surgical option was used, 80% of the gents shrank their prostate and enjoyed relief from those pesky symptoms. So if your prostate is giving troubles, it's probably worth exploring whether you have a varicocele. And if you do, get it fixed so you can create better body chemistry and better health. Visit our website to learn more. I recommend browsing both our testosterone and gravity library pages. The links are in the description. If you need more help and support, join the Better Body Chemistry Accelerator, our membership program with ongoing monthly support, or book a one-on-one -on -one health conversation to get a personal plan of action. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science. Here's one of the references I've used to tell today's story. Know someone with prostate problems? Share this video with them. So they know snipping out the prostate or flatlining testosterone levels are not the only options. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference.